These men and women are alumni and supporters of Lincoln University in Jefferson City. They gathered recently in St. Louis for a dinner aimed in part at raising funds for the university's Soldiers Memorial Plaza project. I don't know of any other institution of higher learning which was founded by soldiers, uh, even military schools in the country that have a military focus were not founded by soldiers themselves. Lincoln is an historically black university, or HBU. It was founded in 1866 by soldiers who served in two colored infantries during the Civil War. The memorial is the brainchild of the man who just retired as Lincoln's president, David Henson. We have approved a design for the memorial which depicts the soldiers uh, with a book in their hand, their white officer uh, standing in their midst, and one soldier kneeling and lifting the others up to the pedestal where they stand. During the Civil War, some 180,000 African American men served in segregated units in the Union Army. Both runaway slaves and free men volunteered to fight for the emancipation of all African Americans. After the war, members of the 62nd and 65th U.S. Missouri Colored Infantries, including Logan Bennett of Jefferson City and John Drain of Central Missouri, donated close to $6,000 to open the school that would evolve into Lincoln University. The university's genesis is detailed in the book, The Soldier's Dream Continued, by Lincoln history professor Antonio Holland. When they were being organized, Missouri had laws against the uh, educating, uh, teaching blacks to read and write. The, um, the last time that Missouri uh, emphasized that law with heavy uh, fine and, punish and punishment for teaching an African American to read and write was in 1847. So most of all these soldiers, uh, generally speaking, were illiterate. And so uh, among uh, the officers were former uh, educators. Richard Baxter Foster was a lieutenant and abolitionist who taught the soldiers to read, helped them form what was then Lincoln Institute, and served as the school's first principal. It really had to start off as very basic, you know, I mean, just uh, uh, learning to, you know, the, the, the reading and writing, and as students advanced, they added grades on as such. Lincoln's focus in its early years was to train teachers. That was really the crying need at that particular time. And of course, this was a time at which you could teach up to the level you had been taught. What was it like to discover this mother load of historical material? I couldn't believe it. Uh, Elizabeth Wilson is Lincoln's librarian and keeper of the university archives. Most of the students who came to Lincoln had to work. Their motto was labor and study. So they probably had to work uh, doing something either in the kitchen or the laundry or farming. I know there were cattle on the campus, there were gardens, and I know the women were doing things like sewing and cooking, and everybody earned his way. They started the athletics department later on, and uh, many of them came here on athletic scholarships. And um, later on in the history of Lincoln, there were some achievements that were really outstanding in the area of football during the 50s and the 60s and so on. Another early addition to the school was vocational classes. Men were taught mechanical arts, and by World War II, the school was contributing graduates to the cause. Some of Lincoln's grads did go on to become Tuskegee Airmen, and that was that fighting unit of uh, African Americans that was known for its valor. Lincoln also played a role during the Civil Rights Movement. In a court case that predated the landmark Brown v. Board of Education, Lincoln graduate Lloyd Gaines sued after being denied admission to the University of Missouri Law School. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled that either Gaines would have to be admitted or the state would have to build a so-called separate but equal law school. The latter prevailed and a law school, which has since closed, was created for Lincoln.
Then in 1954, after the Brown versus Board ruling, Lincoln University opened its doors to students regardless of race. Today, the student population is half African American, half white, and other ethnic groups. A lot of Lincoln Junior Deanna Mitchell of St. Louis is following in her father's so footsteps attending here. So there's no reason anyone at Lincoln should ever fail. If you do, it's your choice because Lincoln does everything. They provide the best instructors. They provide the best, the best, I mean, it's just a really good environment to be in. As Lincoln works toward its goal of raising $1.3 million for the Soldiers Memorial Plaza, Mitchell's excitement is palpable. I can't wait to this bill. <laughs> I can imagine myself when I become an alumni of Lincoln coming back and seeing that uh, this this going to be something really great because a lot of the alumni, a lot of people have worked very hard to get this built and have, I actually worked for the Alumni Association calling people trying to get them to donate to this. It doesn't hurt that Lincoln and other historically black colleges and universities have a nationally syndicated disc jockey raising money for them. How you doing, man? Tom Joyner was the keynote speaker at that dinner in St. Louis. Since 1998, the Tom Joyner Foundation has raised over $29 million for HBCUs. When you have a thriving HBCU, you'll have a thriving black community. And they go together, and, and our, our communities need to thrive. So uh, I'm committed to HBCUs. Through the worst of times, Lincoln survived and managed to do just uh, very outstanding things, I think, which is back a testament back to these soldiers who managed to come up with this dream and this plan, and that it's still, their dream and plan still is alive today, and I think that's a good thing. Morning.